thank you, Kelly, very much. Uh, as a former New England governor, Dan Malloy is well aware of the demographic, fiscal, and workforce challenges that we are facing throughout our region. Dan also knows of the competitive realities facing institutions of higher education in the Northeast. He's kindly agreed that the flagship match billboards on the highways around Hartford <laughs> offering humane attendance for the in-state cost of UConn are going to be water under the bridge. Um, Dan knows that Connecticut cannot retaliate in kind as we banned billboards over a generation ago. <laughs> No doubt with this very day in mind. And we, uh, on our side, are ready to move on from his successful recruitment of Jackson Labs uh, into Connecticut a few years ago. It would be nice to be able to say that in contrast to being a governor, the job of a chancellor is not a political one. It would be nice, but it would be wrong. There's a story, perhaps apocryphal, about the time Dwight Eisenhower transitioning from President of the United States to President of Columbia University was told, welcome to the big leagues. <laughs> Dan appreciates that there will be a political dimension to the office of Chancellor, both, in, both inside the academy and inside the State House, where the Chancellor must advocate for public higher education, including in competition with many priorities seeking funding from the limited resources of a poor and relatively small, a, re, a small and relatively poor state. But Dan also appreciates that however political the role of the chancellor can be, the politics are not, indeed cannot be, partisan in nature. We have a board policy, policy 214, for those of you who are interested in looking it up, that requires this. For any who may be concerned about a leader with a partisan political background for this role, we think Dan will be able to deploy his skills and experience as a public leader to our great advantage while fully embracing the nonpartisan nature of his position. As my board colleagues have shared, we have come a long way over the last seven years positioning public higher education in Maine to provide a level of service and leadership that rises to the challenges of our times. We owe a great thanks to Jim Page for his higher education leadership, vision, and state service. He and Dan are already planning significant time together in June to make the transition as smooth as possible. I can think of no better expression of appreciation for Jim and his work than a commitment to continue down the path that he has envisioned for public higher education in Maine. The strategic priorities of the board that the board adopted in December and the selection of Dan Malloy as our next chancellor are clear indications of the board's resolve to expedite our transition to one university and all the potential that it brings. The unfortunate reality is that we do not have enough Mainers working through our state high schools and colleges to meet employer needs for skilled workers. Within that diminishing pipeline, pipeline we also have an acute crisis among young men who seek post-secondary education, at least in our public systems, at only two-thirds the rate of young women. We need to maximize the number who attain some level of post-secondary credential. Making more of what we teach directly connected to a job is a top priority. Building the size and skills of Maine work, Maine's workforce must also include reaching Mainers traditionally underserved by higher education, lifting their Maine career aspirations and committing the state's public education resources to their lifelong success. Expanding our reach into this group of learners is also a top priority. We must continuously include new approaches to what we teach and how we teach it to meet the competitive challenges of today's higher education marketplace. A University of Maine system degree should be known far and wide to mean employable. This too is a top priority. Now these three priorities are at the core of the vision articulated in the board's strategic declaration, which is for a student first employer-engaged, efficient, and cost-effective continuum of public education that provides Maine people with access to flexible, relevant 21st century learning from early childhood to retirement. This is how we must connect all our learners to their futures as workers and as citizens. This is the core of the next chancellor's responsibility. These priorities must determine how we organize, how we allocate precious state resources, 
and what and how we teach. Now, this challenge is not just for the universities within our system. If public education is to be effective along its entire continuum, all of its components must organize to achieve the key outcomes for which they are primarily responsible and align with each other for the seamless flow of students and services. Let me just give one example from our, within our system. As I've noted multiple times over the last six months, the time of seven separate and autonomous universities is over. That structure places an unfair burden on our small campuses to remain independently accredited when both our demographics and the marketplace are making it increasingly harder for them to do so. That structure also greatly limits our institution's ability to collaborate with cross-campus programming without running afoul of our accreditors. Yet, if we are to make student needs our primary driver, if we are to generate the workforce our state so desperately needs, we must both maintain our rural campuses and make our programs available to any student anywhere. The way we are structured and organized must serve these priorities and not the other way around. Despite many important one university advances, especially with shared back office services, our current structure still burdens tuition and taxpayers with the cost of expensive administrative redundancies, limits the scope and pace of educational reform, and constrains our capacity to provide statewide leadership. And so this is the fourth priority outcome that awaits our new chancellor. Collectively, these outcomes present our chancellor with a complex leadership challenge, both to support our faculty and campus leaders working collaboratively in the achievement of the board's first three goals, and to reshape the structures, systems, and most importantly, the culture of the University of Maine system to eliminate the obstacles that could impede or even prevent the achievement of these strategic outcomes. Dan Malloy is an executive leader and public servant committed to taking on complex change initiatives and getting the job done. As governor, he delivered forms and structural changes to state government that were not always popular, certainly not expedient, but that advanced the long-term interest of his state and its citizens. Dan fully understands how important it is for change to begin with building understanding and support, and he will place a great premium on teamwork and empowerment. Our public institutions of higher education bring together people of all socioeconomic backgrounds, all races, all political persuasions. All of us who work with and support the system understand the power of education to raise people up, economically and otherwise, to face the grand challenges of their generation. But many Mainers do not aspire to realize the benefits of a post-secondary education. If we are to succeed in addressing Maine's workforce and population crisis and build our civic culture to successfully mediate the challenges ahead in the digital economy, our next chancellor is also going to have to lead us all in communicating the value of education to every corner of the state. Dan Malloy is a person of great personal conviction with an inspiring commitment to public education. The board is united in the belief that Dan's executive leadership experience and style are the right match for us at this time in the university systems and the state's history. On behalf of the board and the people that we serve in the state of Maine, it is a pleasure to introduce to you the next chancellor of the University of Maine system, the Honorable Daniel Malloy.